Hey, what's up guys? Will here for GSM Arena. The new iPhones have arrived, and we'll start off with the regular iPhone 12. It brings some solid upgrades over last year's model, which is pretty exciting for a brand that usually spins incremental changes as a big deal. So what's new? Let's find out in our full review. Usually, you'd assume the vanilla iPhone is a bit more bland and less exciting than the other models. But the iPhone 12 turns that thinking upside down, with its new design and upgraded screen, plus quite a few other new features. Apple is going in a bit of a different direction with the design of the new iPhones. Of course, you still get the square camera bump on the glossy glass back, with the prominent Apple logo. But the iPhone 12 has a flat aluminum frame, with a sharp edge, rather than the rounded ones we're used to seeing everywhere else. Apple has also really stepped up its durability game here. The iPhone 12 has a special front glass from Corning called Ceramic Shield. The back panel doesn't use this new material though. Scratch and drop tests online have shown the Ceramic Shield to be significantly better in shatter resistance, and just a little bit improved in scratch resistance. This year's iPhone also has better water protection than last year's model. Now it can handle being submerged up to 6 meters rather than 2. Water damage is still not covered by the manufacturer's warranty though. And there's a brand new feature they call MagSafe. You can attach various accessories magnetically to the back of the phone. And among the first ones available is the MagSafe wireless charger. But it's the screen which is probably the nicest upgrade you'll find here. Rather than an LCD like on the iPhone 11, you get a 6.1 inch Super Retina XDR OLED. And it has a higher pixel density of 460 ppi, as well as thinner bezels. This display has just a standard 60Hz refresh rate, and you still get that wide notch up at the top for the selfie cam and 3D scanner. Hopefully Apple catches up to the latest trends before long. Besides that though, this screen is pretty awesome. Blacks are deep, and color accuracy is excellent. There's also true tone white balance adjustment based on the ambient lighting. We measured a respectable 640 nits of maximum brightness here, and we had no problem using the iPhone 12 outdoors in the sun. As far as audio goes, the iPhone 12 is well equipped with this pair of stereo speakers. There's one speaker at the bottom, and the earpiece acts as the second one, just like all recent iPhones. These speakers scored a very good mark in our loudness test, and the audio quality here is superb, some of the best we've heard yet. You get great midtones, well presented highs, and even some decent bays. As you might expect from an iPhone these days, you'll need to use a dongle if you want to plug in traditional headphones. And of course, you don't get one in the box. Speaking of what comes in the box, you don't even get a charger this year, just a USB cable. This supposedly has a benefit for the environment, but you better have a charger ready when you get back home with your shiny new iPhone. And storage isn't expandable either. You can choose a model with 64, 128, or 256 gigs of storage built in. Just like last year, the iPhone 12 doesn't use a fingerprint scanner for biometrics. You'll be relying on Face ID recognition to wake up and unlock the phone. It is super fast, reliable, and secure thanks to the advanced 3D scanner. However, in these pandemic times, the magic of Face ID quickly fades away when you're wearing a mask, so you're likely to be entering your PIN instead. All of the new iPhones come with the latest iOS 14.1 pre-installed. And besides some cosmetic changes, it also offers some new features over iOS 13. One of them is widget support on the home screen. And you can place widgets into a stack, which you can set to rotate automatically, or you can swipe through them. There's also a new leftmost panel called Today, which is a space you can specifically fill with widgets. iOS 14 brings a new option for organizing your apps, called the App Library. It's Apple's version of an app drawer, and it sorts the apps into categories for you. Picture-in-Picture Picture mode is a very welcome new feature. It minimizes a supported app into a floating window, over the UI or other apps. Pretty handy for multitasking. There are also plenty of other new features which we covered in our iOS 14 review, which you can find in the link in the description. Otherwise, it's the iOS you know and love. Swiping from the left horn or the notch will summon the notification center. And swiping from the right horn calls up the control center, 
which has customizable toggles. You can also use haptic touch to access additional controls. And the navigation gestures are the same as they have been since the iPhone X. All in all, a breezy and responsive experience. The snappiness of the interface is thanks in part to the iPhone 12's awesome hardware. It's running on Apple's brand new A14 Bionic chipset, which is built on a 5 nanometer process. It's supposed to offer 50% increased CPU performance over the previous A13 chip, which already was no slouch in benchmark scores. Indeed, the iPhone 12 aces the charts with its peak performance, and is probably the fastest smartphone on the planet right now. GPU scores aren't as huge of an improvement over last year, but the A14 still heads the leaderboards, and games run flawlessly here at maximum settings. Plus, the A14 has a Qualcomm 5G modem on board, so you get 5G network connectivity too. It's sub-6 5G in most places except for the states, where the phone also supports millimeter wave 5G. Powering the iPhone 12 is a 2800 mAh battery, smaller than last year's, and despite the power efficiency of the new chipset, the battery life score has gone down a bit. The iPhone 12 scored an endurance rating of 84 hours in our proprietary tests. Now onto charging, which is a bit of a sore topic since there's no charger included. We purchased Apple's 20 watt charger for this test, and we were able to charge the iPhone 12 from 0 to 58% in half an hour. There is support for wireless charging too, and with a MagSafe charger, it's supposed to be fast. We weren't too impressed though. From a dead battery, it charged to only 30% in half an hour. Now onto the iPhone 12's dual cameras. It's a similar setup to the iPhone 11's, with a 12 megapixel main camera with OIS and a 12 megapixel fixed focus ultra wide cam. But this year, you get a slightly wider aperture on the main cam, and the ultra wide has night mode. Daylight photos from the main camera are very good. There's a nice amount of detail, low noise, balanced sharpness, accurate colors, and above average dynamic range. However, if you look too closely, you will see that fine and intricate details, like foliage, often come out smeared. This camera system may be getting a bit long in the tooth already, with larger sensors taking the lead these days. Portraits are shot with the main camera, and they are excellent, sharp and rich in detail with true-to-life colors and superb contrast. The subject separation is quite competent, and will rarely make a mistake. Photos from the ultra-wide camera are good. These are among the widest photos we've captured, and the distortion correction is very proficient. Plus you get good contrast and true-to-life colors. However, the level of detail is just average here, and again the camera struggles with fine detail like foliage. If you're shooting in low light, the night mode will kick in automatically. It's among the fastest night modes we've used, taking only a 1 or 2 second exposure and saving the photo immediately. These images are flagship worthy, they're sharp and pretty detailed, with great contrast, low noise, and natural looking color saturation. Highlights and shadows are well preserved, and the exposure looks more true to life than many other night modes we've seen. Night mode can do more of a difference if you can hold still for even longer. In those cases, even pitch black scenes can come to life. You can disable the night mode, and in these scenes, sharpness and contrast took a hit. There's a bit more noise too, but otherwise, these shots are still good. Unlike last year, the ultra-wide camera now offers night mode too. These photos are quite usable, they have a balanced exposure, preserved highlights, a decent amount of detail, and true-to-life colors. They are still noisy and soft though. Ultra-wide shots without night mode aren't good. They have very low detail plenty of noise, and everything looks super soft and smeared from up close. Now on to selfies from the 12 megapixel front facing cam. You have a choice between two different framing modes, a 12 megapixel wide mode, or a cropped in 7 megapixel one. These selfies are excellent with great detail and contrast, superb colors, and well handled noise. The HDR is well balanced too, giving a natural look. Thanks to the front facing 3D camera, selfie portraits are great. These are in the 7 megapixel cropped mode, and you get incredible subject separation and a nice looking defocused background. Night mode is available on the selfie camera too, and it brightens the whole photo and exposes more detail. The images are still soft and noisy, yet rather usable. You can shoot selfie videos in 4K resolution, and these are excellent, with very good detail. Now onto video capture with the rear cameras, starting with the main one. The quality of 4K video here is stellar. You get true-to-life colors, 
excellent contrast, low noise, and impressive dynamic range. Fine detail is a little lacking, but it's not a big deal. 4K footage from the ultra-wide has excellent contrast, colors, and dynamic range. The resolve detail is mediocre though. In low light, the iPhone 12's 4K videos are very good, among the better we've seen. There's enough detail, good colors, and reasonably low noise. And there's electronic stabilization available on all cameras in all resolutions. It's fantastic, as you'd expect from an iPhone. There's a new feature this year. Now you can capture HDR videos straight into the Dolby Vision Dynamic HDR video format. The color boosting information is saved separately, so the video will look normal on a non-HDR player or screen. So that's the iPhone 12. It's got a lot going for it with this excellent OLED screen, great quality stereo speakers, an elegant, durable, and water-resistant design, good camera quality, a next-gen lightning-fast chipset with 5G, and of course the latest iOS with plenty of software support down the road. Now there are some things Apple could have done better here though, the biggest one being the lack of a charger in the box. Come on. Also the battery life is a step back, and you don't get a smooth high refresh rate on this display. And these days you'll have to get used to typing your pin code when you're out in public since Face ID doesn't work with a mask on, so not having a fingerprint reader kind of hurts. But even despite all of these shortcomings, the iPhone 12 remains an excellent phone that deserves our full recommendation. This year it avoids the role of the dumbed down model and provides all of the core new features introduced with the iPhone 12 series. Just keep in mind that in some markets like the US, you can upgrade to the 12 Pro for something like an extra 100 bucks, and that's worth considering too. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, stay safe, and see you on the next one.